The cell concentration in the microcarrier is typically measured by counting the nuclei. Before the sample is withdrawn from the spinner culture, make sure that the culture is well mixed. Usually one to two milliliters of sample are sufficient for the cell counting. For accurate measurement, it is necessary to ensure that all the microcarriers in the pipette are released into the test tube for cell counting. This can be achieved by holding the pipette vertically when the microcarrier suspension is released from the pipette. As a general practice, whenever a sample is taken for cell count, another sample is placed in a 24-well plate for microscopic observation. When a fermenter is used, usually a sample is taken by withdrawing fluid from the sampling tube. A low flow rate is used when taking samples to avoid exerting excessive shear force on the cells in the sampling tube. Before the addition of the nuclei counting solution, the culture supernatant must be removed. Microcarriers settle to the bottom of the tube quickly, even without centrifugation. However, the boundary between the supernatant and the microcarriers is usually not sharp, making subsequent removal of supernatant a bit difficult. By centrifuging at about 500 RPM for 30 seconds to one minute, a packed bed of microcarrier beads is formed at the bottom of the tube. After centrifugation, a sharp boundary is seen between the surface of packed microcarriers and the supernatant. Vacuum suction is then applied to remove the supernatant. Care should be taken to avoid sucking off any microcarriers. This is achieved by placing the tip of the pasture pipette on the interface between air and liquid and aspirating the liquid along the wall. For an accurate measurement, try to remove as much liquid as possible, leaving only the packed bed of microcarrier beads at the bottom of the centrifuge tube. Counting solution is then added to the beads to disperse them from the bottom of the tube. Be careful to avoid leaving beads on the wall of the test tube unsubmerged. The test tube is then screw capped and incubated at 37 degrees centigrade for approximately one hour. This one hour incubation stains nuclei of the cells and also loosens nuclei from other parts of cellular material. These nuclei are then released from microcarriers by gentle shearing with a pasture pipette. A relatively gentle pipetting up and down through the pasture pipette is usually sufficient to release all nuclei. Too fast a flow rate may damage the nuclei and render the counting difficult. Foaming can occur if air bubbles are sucked into or from the pasture pipette. In general, one should also avoid generating foam during repeated pipetting. Pipetting four to six times is usually sufficient to release all nuclei from microcarriers. Of course, the amount of pipetting needed varies with cell type and growth stage. After this shearing step, it is advisable to place a drop of this nuclei microcarrier mixture on a glass slide to observe under a microscope. This can help in ensuring that all nuclei have been released from the microcarriers and helps improve the counting accuracy. After releasing all the nuclei into the counting solution, you are ready to count in the hemocytometer. In general, nuclei stay in suspension relatively well. However, if the nuclei suspension has been sitting for some time, mix it gently before placing it in the hemocytometer. Usually a drop of the suspension, including microcarrier beads and nuclei, is placed on the edge of the counting chamber. The clearance between the cover slide and the hemocytometer is relatively small and does not allow the microcarrier to pass through. Thus, nuclei migrate with liquid into the counting chamber while the microcarriers remain outside. The nuclei are an ovoid shape with a purple color. At times, you may see a large amount of cell debris. This should not cause much concern unless a large number of broken nuclei are also observed. It is usually an indication that too much shear force has been applied, and the count may not be accurate. This procedure of releasing nuclei from microcarriers is generally applicable to different cell types. For cells which are only poorly attached to microcarriers, they fall off easily, 
and the count may not be accurate. In other cases, cells on microcarriers may have formed multi-layers or even clumps. This usually causes difficulty in releasing all of the nuclei from microcarriers. Therefore, it is important to observe microcarrier and nuclei suspension under a microscope after the shearing step. A question that needs to be addressed is how much counting solution should be added to the packed microcarrier beads. In general, a constant volumetric ratio of counting solution to the packed beads should be maintained. Consider the case of 5 grams per liter of Cytodex-1 microcarrier culture. In one milliliter of the sample, there are approximately 0.12 milliliters of packed beads and 0.88 milliliters of supernatant. In this 0.12 milliliter of packed beads, there are usually approximately 0.85 milliliters of solid microcarriers and 0.35 milliliters of interstitial liquid. The 0.88 mils of supernatant is sucked off after centrifugation. However, the interstitial liquid is still retained in the packed beads. A one milliliter counting solution is then added and nuclei are released. After their release, these nuclei are evenly distributed, not in one milliliter, but in 1.035 milliliters of total liquid. Then these nuclei are counted in the hemocytometer. The concentration obtained in the hemocytometer count is taken as the concentration of nuclei or cells per milliliter in the reactor. Therefore, approximately a 3 to 4 percent error occurs in such a counting procedure. This error is negligible under most circumstances. However, the error becomes more significant at higher microcarrier concentrations if the volume of counting solution is not proportionally increased. There are certainly many ways of defining the cell concentration for microcarrier culture. However, Always be consistent in defining what concentration you are referring to.